Okay, well, I, hello everyone. If you can find pause in your conversations. Perfect, thank you. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, when we started talking about this, this, this was uh, my wildest hope. I, I, I can't count this quick, but I'm estimating it's a couple hundred people, and that, that's fabulous. I, I felt when I woke up this morning and as the day progressed and it was beautiful and sunny, I thought, no way we're going to get to 200 people. So all of you must have already been tired by the time you showed up here. But I'm Mark Suzik. I'm the building principal for the Hastings Middle School. I'm very excited to be part of this endeavor. And um, I'm glad to meet you. Just a couple of housekeeping notes. There are both men's and women's bathrooms down this main hallway going in that direction. And there's also a women's restroom behind this big stairwell and a men's restroom back here to the right. So if you need that. If there's anybody uh, that needs support as a Spanish speaker, is Patty Perez here? I think Patty's here. Okay. An interpreter, is, an interpreter is here if you do need help. And also, just a little bit about the lie of the land, the stuff that, that we're going to do today. We are going to be sharing some information about the diversity in Hastings. We're also going to, uh, you'll have a chance to hear from some of the leaders of Hastings Public Schools and also the city of Hastings. And then you're going to hear about some opportunities to stay part of the conversation and continue to be involved and, and help to continue to move the ball forward in Hastings. And uh, last but certainly not least, Melanie Mesco. Thank you. Um, I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming not only our school board members and our city mayor and city council members, but also a number of community leaders that have chosen to join us tonight. And I'm very pleased um, for the business owners. We have representatives from Dakota County, our hospitals, members of our faith community, United Way, Hastings Family Services, Coburn's, YMCA, wonderful businesses. So thank you very much for being here. If I missed you, my apologies. I also have, um, would like to welcome Senator Carla Bigham. I saw Senator Bigham here, as well as Commissioner Mike Slavic. Thank you. Um, and I don't think I have anybody else. And with that, I... Tony Jurgis, excuse me, Tony, I'm sorry I didn't see you. Welcome, thank you for joining us. And with that, I am going to turn it over to back to Mark. Yeah, back Great. To me. Thanks, Mark. There you go. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm going to share some information about diversity presently in Hastings. I will tell you that there's a slight bias toward Hastings Public Schools because I, the, so much of the data relates to kids that I swim in. And so I've got a lot of information about kids. Now, I've been an administrator in Hastings for 20 years, and throughout that time, the diversity has slowly uh, increased in a lot of different categories. Often when we think about diversity, one of the first things that we think about is racial and ethnic diversity. And so I was tracking that with the help of our, our, our district office, Missy Williams, and we, we, we said, okay, let's look back 10 years and find out what the, what the racial and ethnic diversity was at that time and how it's progressed since then. And there's some really stark uh, trends that are, that are notable. We have in 2007-2008 in school year, the, the non-white diversity rate was 7.27%, and now it's 12.48. But what's interesting is, for the first five years, it only grew by 1.3%. So if, over the course of five years, it grew by 1.3%. Since that time, it's grown by another 3.8%. And so in the last several years, it's grown considerably more. When we look at the diversity in Hastings Public Schools, this is another interesting note. The high school is slightly less diverse than the middle school, and the middle school is considerably less diverse than the Hastings Public Elementary Schools. I'll give you those numbers. The high school right now has a, a non-white diversity rate of 10%. The middle school has a non-white diversity rate of 11.3%. And Hastings Elementary School has a non-white diversity rate of 15.5%. So what that means for us, if, if nothing else happened, if we just waited five years, the kindergartners would be in fifth grade, right? And so the middle school's diversity 
would be 15.5%. But even more interesting than that, when we look at the kids that are moving into Hastings, and of course kids come with families, right? So when we look at the families that have school-aged kids, we know that from other Minnesota schools, the families that have moved into Hastings, the diversity, the non-white diversity of kids moving into Hastings is 37.2% from other Minnesota schools. And for families that are moving to Minnesota and deciding to live in Hastings, the non-white diversity rate is nearly 50% at 48.3. And what that means for us is that over time, it won't just be that, that the elementary kids who are more diverse will, will grow up and be middle schoolers and high schools. What that really means is that fam the families that are joining us, we will become more racially and ethnically diverse over time. Okay? And, and that, that change will happen relatively quickly. Diversity is all kinds of other things besides, though, race and ethnicity. Like, for instance, age. And a lot of this is on the fact sheet that you've got, but there's a couple of things I wanted to emphasize. Because Dakota County sprang up as a, as a, a, a county filled with a bunch of baby boomers, those baby boomers now are retiring. And they are, they're retiring at, a, at an incredible rate. Right now, over the next 15 years, Minnesota will retire more than the past six decades. That's pretty incredible. Resulting in a labor shortage that's unprecedented by the, it, since the end of World War II. That's a big deal. In 2023, kids, school-aged children, will, will, for the first time, be outnumbered by seniors, people that are 65 and older. So that's a significant trend. In regard to sexual orientation, on the 2016-17 Minnesota Student Survey, that's a, that's a survey taken by kids in school in every third year. In the 16-17 data, 10% of our Hastings High School juniors reported being either bisexual, gay or lesbian, or questioning. Poverty is, is a concerning trend, of course, and maybe one of the most interesting and, and concerning trends is that poverty hits kids harder than it hits other uh, ages of, of people. When you look at the poverty rate in Hastings, it is 7.5% for everybody overall, but for kids who are 18 or younger, the poverty rate is 86 and of course, again, kids live in families. And so what that means is that families that have school-aged children more often find themselves in poverty. For instance, in Hastings right now, and, and uh, it, our free and reduced lunch is 21.2%, and that's a total of 942 kids. So that's pretty considerable. Immigrants, people moving to Minnesota from other, uh, from other countries, in Dakota County, the immigrant repre representation is 9%, but it's growing rapidly. 23% of the growth in Dakota County comes from immigrants. We track special programs or special populations in public schools because of some of the services that they provide. Our ESL population in Hastings is 1.4% of the total population. One interesting thing is that those 1.4% of our kids go home to families that speak different languages after school than what they've heard all day during school. There's 28 different languages represented in, in the homes of, of the kids in Hastings Public Schools. Special education is at about, well, it is at 13.9%, and homelessness is 0.3%. So now think about that. 0.3% of the kids that attend Hastings Public Schools are homeless. We've got 4,800 kids roughly. That means 14 kids are homeless that show up at our doorstep every day. Mental health and, and trauma have never been a bigger concern. I've, if you've known me at all professionally, you know that it's one of the things that I continually say is that the single thing that's increased the most since I started my career is the frequency and severity of mental health issues in kids and families. And 
just a number that astounds me, 25% of the kids that go to school in the, in the United States right now have a diagnosable anxiety disorder, according to the National Institute of Health. Recently, in 2014, relatively recently, the state of Minnesota, along and, and this tracking has happened across the nation, but in 2014 there was a great executive summary about trauma and adverse childhood experiences. And the research shows that more than 50% of the kids in, in Minnesota have one or more adverse childhood experiences. And you can refer back to your notes to have more about that or to find out more about it. And I just want to comment maybe before we, we kick off the, this evening's program and you'll hear from other people. I just wanted to say that I've, I've lived in Hastings my whole life. And I am 100% confident that we have the wisdom to know that being different doesn't mean that you are less than. I am 100% confident that we have the humility to know that our own viewpoints are derived from our lived experiences and the compassion to realize that if we slow down and talk to other people, they can benefit from our past experiences and we can benefit from theirs when we hear about them. And I have the confidence to know that we are going to continue to be a strong and vibrant and welcoming community. And the reason I have that confidence is that I know that as we progress, we are going to be someplace that's fantastic. And that's because we're going to be in Hastings, and the reason it's going to be fantastic is that we are all going to be together. So, with that, I think we are going to start uh, with Superintendent Tim Collins. Thank you. One of the things that we decided was, you know, we really should say it out loud. And tonight we're saying it out loud. We should say, for me, it's a proclamation of acceptance. That we in Hastings, we accept all. And tonight is our chance where, as elected officials, as city council, as school board members, we get to say it out loud that we accept all. And so with that, I know that you could read it, but we decided as a group that we would read our proclamation out loud because we want to put our voice uh, to the words. And so um, I will start out about the date. You know, the, the city council is going to be approving this at a, a meeting coming up as a school board. We already unanimously approved this proclamation about a week ago, so we'll, we'll start it out, and then I'll pass the mic to uh, Kelsey Waits as a school board member. They'll take turns, and then Mayor Hicks will read the, the last whereas. So we have gathered on the 29th of April, 2018, to resolve and proclaim our common beliefs, aspirations, and commitments to ensure that Hastings is a safe and com caring community for all persons. Diversity may be identified based on any factor, including but not limited to ethnic, racial, sexual orientation, religious, language competence, socioeconomic status, physical health, mental health, gender identification, age, cognitive ability, physical ability, cultural affiliation, immigration status, family structure, or employment status. Whereas, we acknowledge that Hastings enjoys a rich heritage because of the contributions from diverse persons in the past. The population is continually becoming more diverse, and the common understanding of diversity is continually broadening. We know that this diversity will continue to evolve and increase. We accept our obligation to be well-informed and ready to meet the needs of our ever-changing population. Whereas, we appreciate the diverse perspectives, contributions, and talents of all people, 
and we believe that we are better, stronger, and more resilient collectively because we are diverse. Whereas discrimination occurs when any person is treated differently based on their diverse status, we believe that no person should be treated in a negative way because of their diverse status. Whereas we will not accept intolerance, discrimination, or harassment toward any person because of their diverse status. We are all weakened when any citizen, student, neighbor, colleague, client, customer, visitor, or community member is degraded. Whereas, equity enables all persons to participate fully. Equity provides for the fair treatment of all people by intentionally consider considering barriers to access and working to eliminate the barriers that limit full involvement in our community. Whereas, equity is provided through individual actions and systemic procedures and practices that ensure access to all of the resources needed for a person to be healthy, connected, and productive. Whereas, providing equitable, equitable access for all requires systematic change and continuously reflective practices in formal organizations. And whereas, providing equitable access requires individual persons to consider their own innate bias and question how these biases affect their day-to-day -day interactions with others. Therefore, as elected officials, we are systematically, we will systematically defend the rights and privileges of every person to fair treatment and full access. Therefore, we will consider the disaffect, the disaffected and unempowered people that we serve, we will consider the impact of our decisions and respect their needs and perspective as they work to get as they work to serve them. We will not accept intolerance, discrimination or harassment. We will we will advocate for them whether they are present, absent or as we make decisions. Therefore, we will continue to monitor and evaluate quantitative and qualitative data that will help us to accurately understand the diversity in Hastings and the experiences of the diverse persons we serve. Therefore, we will share information regarding diversity and equity with the community through publications, training, and educational programs. And therefore, be it resolved and proclaimed that Hastings will rise to be a community where all persons will receive fair treatment and full access. In Hastings, all are welcome. Well, that was rather exciting, wasn't it? And history making. Welcome to history today, ladies and gentlemen. You know, during my uh, State of the City address, I announced that we'd begin an initiative and a community conversation about diversity, inclusion, and equity, and that that would be in our future. Today, ladies and gentlemen, today is our future. As I said on that occasion, the faces of Hastings are changing. And that ought to be celebrated. And we needed to begin to have a community conversation. It has been said that the greatest challenge we face in creating compatible relationships is our ability to respect 
and accept the differences in people. This is the essence of diversity. Now, having a community conversation is not easy or simple. But let's look around this room, ladies and gentlemen, for a minute. Look all around. See how all of who are here. As I said earlier, you are looking at history. We've never had a meeting like this in Hastings before on this subject. Achieving an understanding of diversity sets the shape for unity. That is why we are here. Bill Gullery, who's an author on this important topic, writes that we, and we are a sample of that, we are responsible and accountable for the conditions of our lives and the society and community that we want to create. He says, in unity, there is no obstacle that cannot be overcome or objective that cannot be achieved. We are having this community discussion tonight not as a response to any kind of crisis, but rather having our community to be proactive, to be transparent, and sensitive to all who live within our great community here in Hastings. These discussions tonight will help begin the balance to acknowledge to each other the equality of all people and to realize our inherent connectedness. With the city of Hastings, with the proclamation that was just read, we are going to respect those principles. And many of our department heads and employees within the city of Hastings are involved in professional organizations that have focused on this topic. The city of Hastings is committed on how and find ways to better foster these connections of diversity, inclusiveness, and equity. And we look forward through forums like this and to future programs and action steps that you'll be hearing about later to advance a greater understanding of a more welcoming Hastings. Thank you and congratulations to everyone here. Thank you. Mark had left me a note and he said, take some time to share with uh, everyone what the school has done so far on this issue. And it was unbelievable. I met with our administrators about a week ago and I took down some notes of some of the programs and initiatives that we've worked on, uh, equity, in inclusion, diversity, et cetera. And just quickly, within about 10 minutes, there were 25 different programs or initiatives. So Mark, I apologize. I'm, I'm not going to go through all of them. But I, I will say this. As superintendent of the Hastings School District, my administrators, we work collaboratively together and we're always looking to be number one. And whatever we're doing today, we want to improve on and do better tomorrow and three weeks from now. And really, it's through your generosity as a community that we've been able to enter into these programs. A lot of these programs and initiatives aren't in other school districts. And I'm just going to name just a few. Within the last five to six years, because of you digging into your pockets and passing levies, we've been able to ha uh, hire Canvas Health mental health workers that we get to have right within our schools. Because of your generosity over the last six to eight years, we've hired 360 social workers that get to go out into the, the homes of families that are struggling and need our assistance. Because of some business and organizations that give very generously just our, our, our Eagle Bluff program, where we get kids connected and, and through that program all of our eighth graders find out what it's like to trust somebody else, to respect other people. Our respect retreat. Because of that money that comes in, we're able to have students go through and, and understand what it's like to respect law enforcement, respect your parents, respect people of other color, respect one another. Most of the initiatives that we do tie back to linking kids to one another. Link Crew, 
We stole that from another school district. We reached out and said, wow, that's really good. Peer helper program. We stole that from another school district. We try to reach out and steal everything that's, that's going well in other schools. And, and a lot of it ties back to we want students to feel like they're connected to somebody, whether that be an adult or a student. And we believe that that ties back to respect and inclusion. I'm gonna use Mike Johnson, our high school principal, uh, and just share a few of the stories. And I know that he's here tonight, as most of our administrators are here this evening. About six years ago, he comes to me and he says to me, Tim, you know, for whatever reason, we do not have female students going into our small engines and, and automotives classes. And he said, we have a responsibility to do something about that. And I wanna create a class where it's female only. And I know that sounds backwards in time that we're gonna segregate and go female only. They have equal opportunity to the classes, but they're not taking them. And I wanna let you know that when we start that class, there might only be five students in that class and it's gonna be pretty expensive to run that class. And he was spot on. We ran that class, it filled up, and then those, those students then took other classes down the road. Again, it's, it's an administrator thinking out, how can we do this differently? We have to. In the last couple of years, Mike Johnson uh, has met with me and he said, you know, we're looking at our AP classes and our honors classes, and we're not seeing enough students of color in those classes. It's not a representation of our student population. We need to do something about that. We need to find out why that is. And again, I'm sharing those two stories about how our administrators look forward of not where we are today, but where we need to be tomorrow, the next day, and we can't sit back and say, hey, we're doing a pretty good job. So again, uh, the school district is always looking to improve. This meeting is very important to us as a school district because the communication that's gonna take place, it will help tell us what we need to do better in the community and what we will need to do better in our schools. I've had several of you, I've probably had 10 people call me in the last week saying, Tim, what is the role of the school in this meeting? Is this a school district-led initiative? And I said, no, it's not a school district-led initiative, but are we one of the main players? Absolutely. But it's something that the community needs to want to get behind. And when I say community, not just the city council, not the ministerial association, not just the chamber of commerce, it's people living in the community who want to say, yeah, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to get involved in something to make this place a better place to live for, for everyone. And so I said, we're just an important part of that wheel. And, and definitely, we have 4,500 to 4,700 students each day that we work with. We have 670 employees that we work with. And one of the areas that we recognize that we do a very poor job on, and that's the training of our adult employees. And that's part of why I'm here as well, to find out what we can do better for the training for our adult employees as well. And one of those individuals that I'm gonna introduce next, uh, their organization does a great job of training their adult employees. Derek Jager from The Y is gonna come up, he's the executive director, and he's gonna share with you some of the training opportunities that he's been sharing with us that uh, the community could get involved in or we as a school district could get involved in. So with that, thank you for coming tonight. Your time is precious. Derek Jager, come on up. Thank you. Uh, at the YMCA, we are extremely excited about this opportunity and this turnout, uh, quite amazing. Uh, the YMCA social responsibility is one of our three pillars, and it's one of those things that we say youth development, healthy living, you can kind of understand what that is. Social responsibility is one of those things that we have to help define. And I do want to say thank you to the city and the school district for starting these conversations and really helping us define what that is. We uh, definitely, with that, with the, one of those being our three pillars, social responsibility, equity is at the core of the YMCA mission. Because of this, I'm very excited to announce that the YMCA has committed significant resources and financial support to the Hastings community, and we're, we're working on rolling out two different phases, uh, which everybody can be involved in. 
the first being a community phase. So we have currently looked at about over covering about half of this cost and are working with our partners in hopes to bring this planning phase to this community free of charge. During the process, we will be able to engage hundreds of Hastings residents in determining what our goals, our next steps, as well as be immersed in activities to strengthen our understanding. The next piece, which I'll just touch on shortly, is what we're going to be calling an equity institute. So these will be offered to local organizations and local businesses to send their employees and volunteers through formal trainings uh, where you can learn more about yourself, where you're at personally. This will include over six full days of training, individual development plans, and social responsibility assessments for organizations, all to be offered right here in this community uh, to have conversations with all of us as a community. So I'm going to in introduce uh, next a couple of our wonderful resources in this work, and my colleague and friend, Hetty Walls, and Ramon Pastrano to come up and talk a little bit more in depth about what this means for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. I have to say something. I'm off script now. Um, I'm not from here. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I'm going to date myself because I grew up during the Civil Rights era. And I want you to know that I wish I could have been in a community like this during my time of growing up without having to feel that I'm different, there's something wrong with me, I don't belong in this community, um, I have no friends, nowhere to go. As a segregated community, we were in our segregated community. But to see this kind of community is amazing. So I want you to give yourself a hand for being here. And I want to thank you uh, for inviting us to be a part of this incredible movement. What we are here to do is to work with you. We're not here to teach you or to train you. We are here to engage with you so that we're all working together toward a commonality of what inclusion is and what it looks like for your community. We will also be able to bring in some resources that will support you as we journey down this pathway together. It's a level playing field. You won't be coming into a process wearing your name tag or your title. We will all be one as a people and what Ramon and I will be doing is doing some engagement around what's your vision, how do you want to work together, really going through those biases. We all have biases, right? The brain development says that we all have biases. None of us are eliminated from that. But how do we work through our community, understanding each other, having empathy for each other without judging each other? and believing that we all have a place here in the city of Hastings. So I want you to know that I'm really excited. We are going to be bringing forth an Equity Leadership Institute, which is what Derek alluded to. We will also be bringing forth an opportunity for you as the community to engage with each other. So we're going to provide some resources. So when we leave at the end, you will be able to engage each other. And we want you to have those really rich um, conversations that you need to have. So we are looking forward to working with you. <clears throat> Good evening. Buenas noches. Buenasera. Como están? Como estai? Mr. Mayor, distinguished panel, thank you for having us here. Like Dr. Hedy uh, said, we are here to be with you, to work with you, uh, and uh, not necessarily to come here to impose anything new. We have had the opportunity to do this type of work, not only here in the United States, but outside the United States. Most recently, we are engaging the city of Minneapolis, uh, the Minneapolis Downtown Council, and many other groups through this uh, type of work. 
So all this know-how to, all these really cool shortcuts that we are learning right now will bring that, uh, that to you. Uh, uh, one of my favorite things about this particular process is the Social Innovation Lab. Sounds a little bit, you know, a um, little bit high, but it's not. It's not. Social Innovation Labs are a platform that will convene all of you, all type of people, all stakeholders, because we believe that the solutions to the problem that we are seeking, uh, the solution that we're seeking to the problems that we have, lie within each and every one of you. So uh, we have done this work with uh, mostly every single ethnic community in uh, Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul, and um, some of the suburbs. And now we are extending or building on that work with uh, some of the other cities. As part of the Social uh, Innovation Lab, we also work with the um, Equity uh, Institute. And like Derek uh, said, this is an opportunity for us to learn about what this work of diversity, equity, and inclusion is. I know that it's still uh, confusing to a lot of people, and sometimes it's even scary, but it's not, trust me. Once you get into the process, you will realize that there's nothing for you to lose, but what you learn is to look and to make decisions with both eyes open. It's looking at commonalities, but it's also taking into consideration uh, differences. So we want to help people move from monocultural mindsets to multicultural mindsets. And multicultural means a lot of things. So I'm um, looking forward to the opportunity to engage uh, all of you. And I would like to see all of you because this is going to be fun. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, as you can see, a lot of resources, a lot of, a lot of things to come. And stay tuned, we're hoping, if everything works out, to kick off the community engagement piece sometime in the fall in the Equity Institute, hopefully by January uh, 19. So stay tuned. If you are interested, uh, thank you to Lee Stoffel, wherever you are. Um, you can go to the city, web, the city website right now, and there's an interest form. Um, and it simply says, if you want to learn more about this as an individual, just put your information in there. If you want to learn more about this as an organization, you can enter your organization in there. And we're just keeping track of who puts their names in there so we can uh, get in contact with you when this is ready to roll. So once again, thank you. Thank you for starting the conversation. We're looking forward to work with all of you and everyone in the community. Thank you. Sorry, right? And I believe I'm bringing Carrie Gore, our Community Education Director, up next to talk about some training opportunities. Hello, I'm Lisa Leifeld, and I'm with... Carrie Gore. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Carrie <laughs> Gore, and I'm the Hastings Community Education Director. Well, as Derek kind of stole some of our thunder, go figure, um, we have created a digital landing spot uh, for all things related to equity in Hastings. Our hope will be that we list all of the events, trainings, the dialogues that are coming up here as a community resource that we'll use moving forward. As, you said, as Derek indicated, you can find this at our hastingsminnesota.gov backslash equity. Save it as a favorite on your computers. Um, and on your tables, you should have an email communication form. Uh, please, we encourage you to include your individual or your organization's emails uh, so that we can get in touch with you for future events. I know many of you in this room today are working towards equity and inclusion. And one such opportunity taking place this summer is the SPARK program. The SPARK program is a youth, for youth in grades two through eight that will take place at Our Savior's Church from June 11th until August 17th. Many organizations have come together to make this program possible, including HPAC, Our Savior's Church, Hastings Family Service, YMCA, Hastings Community Education, Pleasant Hill Library, United Way of Hastings, Black Dirt Theater, and many more. It is our collaborative goal to provide safe, fun, and free programming for all youth in Hastings. Because of our effort, we are able to provide free meals and transportation this summer. Thanks, Carrie. So some of the dialogue that we were going through over the last number of months trying to figure out how to get things started, and I guess that's what led us here tonight, is we talked about Welcome Week. It's a nas National Welcome Week 
that's held in September. So we're going to ask you to mark your calendars, um, get out your cell phones, put it on your calendars. Um, the week of September 14th through the 23rd, we'd invite you to um, join us in celebrating the Hastings' very first welcoming week. Um, that will coincide, like I said, with a national event, so please um, mark that down. During this week-long celebration, uh, our hope is to raise awareness of the benefits of welcoming everyone into our beautiful community. We plan to have training, events, and a resource fair um, that will showcase what each of our organizations and what each of us as individuals are doing to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion in the city of Hastings. If any of you would like to plan, host, or volunteer for an event during Welcome Week, please let us know. And Derek talked a little bit about the two opportunities coming up for training, but I wanted to give you a little bit more information. The first one will be coming up early summer 2018, and it's called Hidden Brain and Unconscious Bias, and it's a three-hour session. And then later on during Welcoming Week, we'll also have a training called Bridging Cultural Differences, and this is two three-hour sessions that will take place during that week. Again, if you include your information on those blue sign-up sheets, we will be in contact about future events, and then also keep tuned in to that website. And I believe I have the pleasure to introduce Bill Spinelli. This one's working, okay, great. Thank you. Um, when we first started thinking about this question a year plus ago, I had no idea 250 people would be in this room. And as recently as a week ago, I didn't know 250 people were gonna be in this room. And this morning I heard maybe 200. Um, and so I gotta tell you, some of the things we had thought we might get to do, we probably won't, because we have so many people who are interested, we need to learn from you. You've heard our civic leaders talk about how we aspire to have this community be a more welcoming community. We all know, they all know, that it can't be done without you, the members of the community. And that's what we're here about now. This is your turn, your time to begin some work. This is the beginning work, but this is the most important work that we can do this evening. So what's it going to be? We're going to have table conversations, and some of you have been involved in some of these in the past here in the community, so you know what I'm talking about, but let me just go over some of the, the, the logistics of it. First of all, we're going to sit and have groups of six to eight people. If you're at a table with only two or three people, I would encourage you to find someone who also is a group of two or three people and, and get together. The richness of the conversation is the variety of the voices. These conversations are going to be directed by two questions, which I'll give you in just a minute. But here's some ground rules. Everybody at your table has a chance to speak. Now, you've all been in situations where you sit around and we get someone who wants to dominate a conversation. I would empower everybody who is here to speak up and say, it's her turn, it's his turn, it's my turn. Everybody has a chance to speak. We need to respect what everybody is saying. There's a couple of ways that people can have a conversation. One is called debate, where I have an idea and I'm going to convince you my idea is right. There's another way. It's called a dialogue. And that dialogue, as I have an idea, and you have an idea, and the sole piece of this dialogue is for me to hear your idea. Let me say that. The sole piece of this dialogue is for me to hear your idea, not for you to hear mine. That will come because you're going to respect and trust that your table partners are thinking and acting in the same way. These ideas are to be put out and heard. We're not in a debate. That will come later. You'll have an opportunity. We'll have an opportunity to have a discussion, which is my idea and your idea, get out, and we can argue a little bit about it without convincing, arguing and staking out a position. So how's this going to work? We have until 7.15. And you'll ask, well, why the 7.15 deadline? Because that's when the ice cream is going to be served, and we don't want it to be melted. We'd like this to be ice cream, not ice, not ice milk or milkshakes. I'm going to use these Tibetan bells to mark 15, 5, and 1-minute intervals prior to being done. 
I want to let you hear them so you know what this is like. You'll notice that at each table there's a pad of paper and a pen. I'm going to ask someone in each of your tables to be a scribe and to write down a summary of the ideas as they come. You don't have to write down verbatim, we need these ideas because this is what we're going to get from the community. And then we're going to give it back to you because what we hope to do is to, not hope, we will do. We will collect these ideas, we will collate them, and we will make them public. If you put your name on the sign-up sheet, we can send it to you individually. We also will make them available on the equity website that's already been identified. And I suspect there'll probably be seven other ways that we can figure out how to get them out to you as time unfolds. But it's important that we have your ideas. That's why you're here. I want you to speak to the other people at your table, but we also want you to speak to us. Okay? My partner in this is Kelsey Waits. You've already met Kelsey. We will be wandering around, offer assistance, answer questions if these unfold, but most importantly, keeping track of time so I can pierce your ears with my bells. Remember, we're interested in your truth. We're interested in your story. This is all part of a community narrative that we're trying to build. All right. I would ask you now, if you will, move around, consolidate tables, and go to work. I will be in touch 15 minutes before we're done, so that'll be at about five after. Oh, the questions. Thank you, Julie. I got busy talking about process. The questions. There's two questions. You've already heard our leaders say that this is, we want Hastings to be a welcoming community. Thank you. Boy, is that embarrassing. The first question, what does a welcoming community look like and mean to you? What would it look like if Hastings was truly a welcoming community to all? And the second question is an action question. What will you, what will you do to make this happen? Now, I understand some of you are here as organizations, and it's OK to speak to what your organization might do. Many of you are here as individuals. I would ask you to speak to what you will do. So question number one, what does a welcoming community look like in Hastings? What does it mean here? And what will you do to make this happen? Thank you, and please go to work. I'm sorry, we've, we've ha I've had a request to repeat the questions. I'm sorry if it didn't come loud. The two questions is number one, we've already heard that our leadership has talked about Hastings being a welcoming community. What does that mean to you? What would Hastings look like as a welcoming community? And question number two is what will you do to make that happen? So the first step is the architecture of what it would look like, and the second question is an action step. What will, can you do to make this happen? Okay? Everybody heard it? I'm sorry. Thank you.